Things have changed so much now, and uh, it's because you know the music industry really bottomed out in 2005 and 2006. It's, believe it or not, on its upswing. And uh, when I started as a music lawyer, it was very difficult to really negotiate with labels, especially if you had a new artist. Like I, one of my new artists that I had way back when I started was Wild Orchid, who I signed to RCA. And you might know Wild Orchid, Fergie is in Wild Orchid. Stacy Ferguson is Fergie, and Stephanie Rydell, and Renee Sandstrom. So I represented them. And, and it was very difficult for them as a new artist because when I did their record deal, they didn't have any quantifiable success. So it was like we were presented with an offer, and that's the offer. You know? And it was, that was very hard when you, don't, when you have a new artist. You know? Now, in the music industry, because so much stuff has happened and the, and the record companies are struggling, they are actually extremely open to new types of relationships. Mm. So if a record company wants to sign one of my artists, um, they usually will call me and say, hey, you know, we're interested in this artist. What's going on with them? And it's, the deal making has become a lot like it is in Japan. Like in Japan, I don't know if you know, is that you know, they're not like Americans where they just rush into deals and sign these enormous contracts and then they get stuck with each other. You know what I mean? That's how we operate as Americans. You know, kind of like getting married. You don't know you f***ing hate them until you're like married and then you're like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> Japanese, thank God, they're so amazing. They actually do this thing where they actually really get to know the, the person or the entity that they're contracting with. So they're really sure when they want to do deals with you. And it's become that way in the music industry. It's very refreshing. So it's now when a label or a publisher wants to sign one of my artists, it's not like a done deal. It's like a series of like getting to know you, the artist, the business team. You know, and, and I'm, you know, I know everybody. I'm, you know, thank God I'm very grateful. So a lot of people know who I am and my reputation. So, you know, but they, you know, and the managers that I work with. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, but in the beginning, it was like they want you to go to lunch with them and really get to know them so they understand really what they're getting into and what you're getting into, you know? So what about, uh, so you find that they're open to joint venture deals now? Yeah, I mean, if you have leverage, you, you can do whatever you want. I mean, if I have an artist that has leverage, like I represent one of my artists as Baby Bash, and he used to be signed to Universal Records, and he had a couple hit songs, and he sold a couple million records. So he's what we call a midline artist. He's a platinum artist. Multi-platinum artist is someone who we, we consider someone who sold millions of records. A platinum artist is someone who sold a, you know, a million or more. That would be like Gavin DeGraw or Baby Bash or somebody like that. And uh, so he you know, has some leverage. So when you know, the Universal deal terminated and I was able to take him somewhere else, I had quite a bit more leverage than I would have with somebody who was new. So I was really able to set the playing field for how I wanted to do the deal. Um, that's great. You know, it's not like that all the time. I mean, sometimes you get an offer and, you know, and you have to explain to the client it's probably not in their best interest. And that's difficult because, in my experience, it doesn't matter how shitty the deal is, the artist always wants to take it. I mean, I explain it to, you know, and that's the thing that artists have to be aware of. I mean, if they just focused on their craft and build their base and just continue on their art and get their music out there, they'll eventually have the leverage to where they can get the deals they want. You know, Too often, artists are like, no, no, let's just take it, because they have this sense of desperation, and they shouldn't. You know, Especially now, there's so many other ways that an independent artist can make money. Do you see the music business changing dramatically in the next few years? Is it all going to be ringtones and, and altern alternative uses or what? You know, here's where I think the music industry is changing. I think record companies no longer are going to be record companies. I think that they are, and they already are doing this. But I think it's going to become more prevalent, where they are getting involved in other aspects of the business. So where record companies, I don't think they're going to be record companies anymore. I think they're going to be multimedia entertainment groups. You know, they're hiring, you know, agents. You know, I know some record companies that have a touring division that now, in the, you know, some of them are, are, you know, signing up their recording artists to be their, you know, touring people. And there's some, there's record companies that are hiring, like, really seasoned merchandising people. 
and they're building in merchandising in their deals. There's record companies that are hiring, you know, uh, seasoned music publishers. You know, so I think they're getting. Oh, and then there's also record companies that are hiring executives that have fantastic relationships with casting directors and producers and directors, and they're hiring these executives. So in the contracts, you're going to see that uh, you know they're no longer going to be just for records. They're going to be for acting. They're going to be for merchandising. They're going to be. I mean, I think we can always. Uh, separate out music publishing because I have a real big problem with a record company signing up publishing. You know, not just because, I mean, publishing, to collect money and license, you know, songs and administer the copyright is one part of the job, but another part of the job which a really great music publishing company can help you with is that they help you, um, you know, they put you together with other songwriters on their roster. So you get to collaborate with other songwriters that are outside of your genre. To, you know, and that's a very, very, very important part of music publishing that a record company can't provide. But they're getting into other income streams.